so we think that we do uh we do we do hold our head up internationally amongst amongst these funds that are often a whole lot bigger than us in managing the fund we have to do that in a manner that's consistent with best practice portfolio management maximizing return without undue risk and is also consistent with avoiding re, avoiding prejudice to new zealand's reputation as a responsible member of the world community and so it's that last bit that's the important bit from a responsible investment perspective there's another part, another piece in our legislation that also requires us to have an ethical investment policy. And so we created the responsible investment framework, and that's the way to give to give life to uh, to that mandate to um, essentially act in a in a responsible fashion, which is what that piece of the legislation says. One one interesting thing for for me was you went through the process of saying, is there a a, a kind of a market failure? You know, are, are um, markets failing to value fossil fuel companies at their proper value, given their their risks that they face for the future? The really important thing is our climate change strategy at the moment is a climate change investment strategy. It's addressing the investment risk and opportunities presented by by climate change, and that's and yep. and we announced that in 2016, and we've been running that for a few years. Looking back at the the fact that the Standard and Poor's oil and gas index has has dropped by sixty three percent over the past five years, do you think you would have done well financially to to have moved a bit faster and further than you have? How how does it look in in hindsight? Now, hindsight is a fantastic thing, but what we have to do is make decisions going forward in the context yeah. of it. So what we did then, as we said, we will reduce this exposure. We didn't, you know, how much do we do we no, we needed to reduce it by, didn't know, thought it needed to be reasonably material. But we're balancing that with uh, what's the impact on the on the diversification in the fund? How do we think about um, how do we think about transitioning to a point where we've reduced this as opposed to going all the way there? Let's reduce our emissions intensity by 20% and our reserves by 40% by 2020. 43 in terms of emissions, 52 in terms of reserves. So we exceeded those targets. And what that did is over the last few years, that's improved the performance of the portfolio. And I had said to the select committee earlier this year, so based on the numbers until December 19, that improvement was about 30 basis points a year, which is several hundred million dollars that we're better off as a result of that reduction in our, in our exposure. Now we'll continue to increase that reduction in our exposure uh, because we think we're getting better information all the time. Uh, and we're getting more confident about how we can how we can implement it. So that's a uh, what you've described as primarily a financial decision that that you have reduced your risk and you're looking for new opportunities. As a a an organisation that that holds uh, the public's money, do you also feel like you have a mandate to act in ways that will enhance the public good? one of our investment beliefs which is critical for us is we believe that environmental social and governance factors and including climate change are fundamental to to investor returns so we we have to think about those but there's a step beyond that which is the one you're going to which is okay so you're investing for a particular outcome uh and and how how do you reconcile that with the commercial mandate it sounds like in terms of analytics and tools you're using many of the same tools that others would use, so kind of the uh, the research houses, the rating agencies. Um, do you have anything kind of fancy stuff that uh, that you do in, in behind with the research and, and the analysis that helps you pinpoint opportunities? Yeah, we built a we built a valuation framework to to help our investment teams think about the impact of climate change on on specific investments that they're making. Uh, we have um, done quite a bit of work on the impact of climate change on, for example, NatCat, nat natural catastrophe reinsurance uh, in the last few years. Uh, but that, that framework is one that I think is, was quite interesting and one that we spent a bit of time talking to our Canadian peer funds. So the likes of the Canadian Pension Plan and uh, Ontario teachers talk to them about how we think that, how that should work. And there is a bit of uncertainty because there are, like I said, multiple facets not just those ones that I talked about before, but the the sort of the other two that we think about are litigation risk, and we're starting to increasingly see litigation around climate change. Uh, there's a case in Australia against one of the super funds, uh, and the other one is 
changing consumer demand. And I think that's the, that's, the, that's the really interesting one that can be really fast, often a lot faster than these other, these other risk factors. You know, you just see a change in consumer perception and then that, that changes valuations in a heartbeat. So uh, for, for everyone else, we've uh, at Mindful Money just had a busy week. We've, we've uh, released a report called Inside the Black Box, and it's an analysis of 280 KiwiSaver funds and uh, 390 retail investment funds looking at what they invest in. And it's information that's on our website. You can go in there and look at and see what's in the portfolios of investment funds. And... Uh, Inside the Black Box report kind of analyzes that and brings it together in a, a summarized way. Shows that, uh, for example, $6.4 billion of, of, uh, of funds are spent on particular issues that the New Zealand public wants to avoid in their investments, like fossil fuels, like weapons, companies that, that uh, uh, test their products on animals, human rights violations, etc. So. So uh, go and have a look at the reports on our website while you're there. Uh, you can have a look at our crowdfunding campaign, a Mindful Money's charity, and we're running our first crowdfunding campaign. So uh, please be generous in supporting us. So final thanks to um, uh, some of our sponsors for, for this series, uh, Booster, Harbour Asset Management and Generate. Thanks very much for, for the support. And particular thanks to Matt Winneray for joining us. Thank you all. Good night. Ka kite ano.